This woman, she was from Bani Israel, and she was a slave. And she was owned by Ali Fir'aun, by the family of Fir'aun. And her job, her job was to comb the hair of the daughter of Fir'aun. And at a time when the men from Bani Israel were afraid to speak about Islam. At a time when Fir'aun was such a volume that he would walk into the houses and these strong buff men would stand there while he would kill their children or his army would. Imagine somebody takes your son, Wallahi, I don't care which superpower comes into my house to take my kids, I'm going out Rambo style, you know. You know, it's first blood or whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to let somebody, I don't care who they are. You gotta die, you gotta die. Right? But imagine an oppression that had put such a fear on Ben Israel that you could walk into their house, take their newborn son and kill him, and they wouldn't do it anything. Wouldn't say a peep. Men were that afraid. And this woman who is a slave, Inside the house of Fir'aun, she's combing the hair of the daughter of Fir'aun, she drops her comb. <clears throat> she drops the comb. What does she say? Bismillah. This is the sunnah. To say Bismillah. When something happens, if you slip, as we know from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as well, later, you should say Bismillah. <clears throat> so she says Bismillah. The daughter of Fir'aun says, what? Who's Allah? How dare you call on somebody else in my father's house? Here we worship Fir'aun. He said, Ana rabbukum ala, yani I am your greatest Lord. This is the kind of boastful statements he used to make in his own house. His own slave is saying, Bismillah. <coughs> she said, Allah, Allah is my Rabb and your Rabb and your father's Rabb. Allahu Akbar. A woman with that iman. Today we're ashamed if somebody thinks we're Muslim. Today we're ashamed that we dress a certain way. If my, my hijab has to be colorful, you know. Look at the iman. So the daughter of Fir'aun here, she says, I'll tell my father. She said, tell your father. So the daughter of Fir'aun, she goes and she tells her father. Her father has her called. He said, you... A weak old woman, a slave in my house, are saying that there is a rub above me? She said, yes. Now imagine the excuses she could have made. Oh no, protection of life. She could have. It wouldn't have been haram for her. But sometimes the iman is so strong that even the mubah, even that which is permissible, does not seem permissible to you. Fir'aun tells her, look, I'll kill you. She said, okay. Imagine somebody comes up to one of us today, how scared we get. Imagine Fir'aun, she has no army, she has nobody to learn. She said, I'll kill you. It's okay. She said, I'll kill your kids. Wallahi, that's a hard test. The mothers, think about. Fathers. Wallahi, if somebody kills me, that's easier than me on me than anybody even touching my kids. And a mother is more loving than that. So imagine when he threatened her kids, how difficult that must have been. And she said, I cannot renounce, renounce Islam. I cannot leave belief in Allah. I can't. So he started to take her kids and kill them in front of her. Zulam Allah. And today, some of our countries are proud of him. <laughs> We're the land of Fir'aun. What? What's your airline called? What's wrong with you? Be the land of Musa, the land of Harun, the land of Amr ibn As. Fir'aun of Zalim, Kafir, Tahut. This Zalim, he starts to kill her children in front of her. The last of her children is a baby that's breastfeeding. Small young baby, can't speak, can't walk, a little child. At this, when they're about to take this baby away from her, her heart starts to tremble. And at this, Allah gave her a miracle. 
and the child spoke. This is Sahih Hadith. And Abdullah ibn Abbas mentions the children that spoke in the end of this hadith and he mentioned this as one of them. The child miraculously spoke and he told the mother that be steadfast because verily the punishment, the hardship of this dunya are easier than the hardships of the akhir. Be steadfast on your iman, on your Islam. Miracle. The child spoke. And then she asked, the mother, she asked, she said, the only thing I ask is you bury me and my children one grave. She couldn't bear that separation. That's how much she loved her children. But she loved Iman more.